Addy, what's up, man? Appreciate it. Does that make you happy? <laughs> Good. That's how you get the views. All right. <laughs> cool. All right, so we'll jump into it. Hey, uh, real quick, I've already said this a couple times, but just to go back over, I'm Casey, CEO and co-founder of Viral Launch. Um, quick backstory on me, I guess. I'm 24. I taught myself coding, dropped out of college, was building apps. A friend of mine, his name is Jordan Decker. He was an Amazon seller, and so he was like, "Hey, we could start this cool business. All you need to do is put up a, the platform and build a couple of websites, and we can get things started." And from there, everything is kind of uh, snowballed into what it is now. We'll probably have 30, 31 employees by the end of the month. Super exciting time, like a lot of growth going on here. We're in the Bar Launch office. You can see kind of half of it, photography studio on the other side of that. Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, in simple rule, this is Cam. Cam is one of our newer coaches. He's the guy coming with me to conferences. So Midwest Ecom, if you're there, ASM in Vegas, if you're there, we'll be there. So hit us uh, up. yeah, hit us up so we can, <laughs> and now you're famous, Cam is a man. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yes. Awesome. Uh, anyways, yeah, so quick housekeeping on Zoom. So the chat, Let's use the chat to talk like we are. Prudence, we have to see each other in Vegas. Um, Q&A is perfect for questions, and it holds the questions so that we can make sure that we are answering what questions you have. How did you get started? Did you start solo? Uh, no, just real quick. Yeah, Jordan, um, it was his idea. We started together. Actually, I only had 40% of the company, which is kind of interesting now. But um, yeah, uh, we ended up going 50, 50 cause I was working so hard and contributing so much. And then Jordan wanted to stay in college and hang out with his friends, continue running track. And so I officially bought him out a year into the business. Now it's been, uh, almost two years since then, but year and a half. And last year we've gone from, I don't know, six employees to we'll have like 30, 31 by the end of the month. So pretty cool growth. And it's all thanks to you guys and all your guys' love and support. So much appreciated. If you guys have questions, um, yeah, just use the Q and A for more question based stuff from the chat for chat based stuff. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Cool. Yeah, shoot us uh, some messages in the chat while we're going. We'll try to interact with you. So, cool. Uh, obviously, we're here to talk about market intelligence. Oh yeah, if you're at any of these events, come stop by and see us, and we'll try to hook you guys up with a shirt. But um, when this work for Canada and you know, we will get to that. All right, cool. So anyways, market intelligence. Is oh, wait, stay tuned. Stay tuned for the end, right? Cause we got, yeah. we got something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have a pretty cool announcement at the end. At least we think it's cool. Um, hopefully you do as well. So yeah, stay tuned. And if you have to tune out at any time, we're recording this, we'll, we'll be posting it and sending it out. So no big deal. Awesome. Cool. So Cam, do you want to get us started? Yeah, sure. So we'll probably be, we'll be screen sharing. Um, oh, shoot, here we go. Sorry, guys. We'll be screen sharing. I'm just going to do this. Is that okay? Yep. We'll be screen sharing for, for most of the time. So I would encourage you guys to, if you have market intelligence, go ahead and jump on. We're going we're gonna to be walking through a couple things. And if you don't, if you go to the Viral Launch homepage, and go to the market intelligence section of the homepage. You can kind of, you can try it for free. Yeah, so you get 15 free searches. We'll be doing less than 15 searches. So if you will want to follow along on your own screen, no big deal. Um, some of this will kind of be some basic overview for those of you who've never checked out market intelligence, just to make sure that you have some context. But really, we kind of want to dive into making sure you know how to get the most out of it. We always get kind of like feature requests or questions on how best to use it. And so we kind of wanted to knock it all out here. And uh, the first webinar, if you saw it on market intelligence, was kind of all over the place. Um, yeah, so we wanted to give kind of a much better uh, webinar or video for people to follow along with. So yeah, let's jump in. So we're just gonna start pretty basic. Um, there are some people on here that might not know what market intelligence is exactly. And so at its, at its most basic form, market intelligence is a data analytics tool right? That's used to, you can use it to research uh, products on Amazon just to, to see certain metrics. And I don't know, Casey, 
what uh, if you could if you would explain to someone what market intelligence is, what would you say? Yeah, yeah. So basically, at the end of the day, I mean, we've run almost twenty thousand launches on Amazon. We've worked with a little over forty five hundred brands, and these guys are ranging from people just getting started to these brands. Uh, our largest seller, they did just under a hundred million on Amazon last year. We're also working with Fortune one thousand companies, um, and so we we have like a really good perspective of what's going on on Amazon? What are the issues that sellers are having? And the number one thing that we're seeing, you know, everyone always asks, you know, is every, uh, every one of those 20,000 launches successful? And unfortunately the answer is no. Um, and part or probably the biggest reason why those launches are not successful is because the seller is getting into a market. They kind of have no business being in, um, based on, you know, their resources and their personality type, their business type, like they, they just have no business being there. And so what we were trying to accomplish with market intelligence is giving you the tools that you needed to have a very accurate representation of what to expect had, if you decided to get into a market. And I mean, we're all in the Facebook groups. And so, so often you see everybody saying, you know, what do you think of this product? What do you think of this product based on screenshots? And so for those sellers, we also wanted to offer some kind of like algorithmic validation for you so that we could give you that answer. Is this a good idea to get into or not? Um, here's a good indicator with a, a, a star rating. And so basically we go really deep into providing you or painting kind of this picture of what, this market looks like. So we're giving as much information, as much deep information, as well as as much wide information on each product market so that you can make uh, good decisions. And so we're also providing, you know, a lot of analysis. I think that's part of our benefit is the algorithmic validation, the sales estimations that we do. Um, yeah. And so basically we really wanted to offer a sophisticated tool to allowing you to research product markets. Yeah. Cool. In the end, in the end, people, there are so many questions. I'm a coach, so I talk to people all day about product validation, right? And there are so many questions just surrounding, is this a good product to look into even? And this, this essentially is a tool to help open a door for you to make sure that it is or is not even a good category yeah. or product to get into. So cool. going into it, it starts with a search, right? You're searching for a product. Sorry, do you want to yeah. jump in? Oh, no, you're good. Okay. Um, it starts with a search, right? Not many people know this, but you can search in two places. You can search from the launch pad, which you can access by logging in here, right? And that brings you here. Over on the, once you're logged in or on the left side, you'll see kind of a bunch of tabs. Market intelligence, if you click on market intelligence, it'll bring you here, where you can search for different products on Amazon. and. Specifically with the tool in the portal, you can you can look at your search history for market intelligence Where it'll it'll give you your top rated searches your pinned searches and just your most recent history as well That's also where you can download the Chrome extension and find some different resources, but pro yeah, tip j just for your uh and the other one is on um, the Chrome extension. So we have a free Chrome extension. If you have your 15 free searches, you can come use a Chrome extension to run your searches or you can do it here. Um, yeah, uh, I'll let Cam get started, but again, follow along if you want. If not, cool. If you're in the LA traffic or stuck in a traffic jam or whatever uh, you, the person said, then just go ahead and watch and you can check it out later. So. Basically, we're going to be doing most of our searches from the Chrome extension. So I would really, I'd encourage you guys to download that if you don't have it. Yeah. But from from the, the portal here, the two kind of the two big main differences are the history that you can go through, and also in case if you want to share a pro tip. Yeah. So the the other thing is that well, there's actually two other things. So one, uh, we have advanced parameters. So we um, put these we take in these parameters into account when producing our star rating. And we also, uh, yeah, basically it's just that. Also for um, landed unit costs, we factor that into net profit and so forth. So um, the other one, so I suggest using this if you're interested, again, for most like larger sellers with good amount of experience, you can do this validation, you know, one to five star rating uh, in your head because you have the experience to do so. But for newer sellers, you can plug in your desired sales minimum or maximum. You know, let's say you don't want to get into those highly competitive markets. Um, you know, say that you're only looking to make $10,000 a month. Only is relative, of course. But, uh, and, you know, let's say you want to make a minimum of $500 and go ahead and plug this in and we'll take that into account when rating the market. Because if you only have the opportunity to make 
you know, let, let's say you want to make a minimum of a thousand dollars a month, but you only have the ability to make five hundred dollars in the market based on our analysis, then obviously it's not a good idea to get into. Um, same with average review quantity, same with net profit. So, yep, use this. Actually, it's, it's pretty interesting. I think like two thirds of searches for market intelligence are happening on this web app. So maybe people don't know enough about the jungle, or sorry, the uh, our Chrome extension. <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe people don't know enough about our Chrome extension. Um, yeah, and the other pro tip here is that you can actually run uh, up to 10 simultaneous searches. So let's say I wanted to look at fish oil and um, yeah, Garcinia Cambogia. Now I'm spelling it wrong. <laughs> Anyways, um, and uh, Red Bull. Like you can press enter and as you'll see, now there's three searches all running market intelligence at the same time. So kind of just as a time saver, it'll crunch through that. I'm gonna close those out. And another thing that we see people do quite often is they actually have a virtual assistant. Let's say you know, you're looking for those product ideas. They'll have a virtual assistant come in and they'll just give them free roam over the tool and they'll be running thousands of searches a day just sifting through trying to find those five star product ideas, four star product ideas that they can then go vet more uh, in depth. So, so what where a lot of people get hung up on is is asking, um, okay, what what or how should I search? Because people people can search. Well, this tool is is incredible and amazing, but if you're searching for the wrong thing, then you might not get to where you need or want to be. So, Casey, can you touch on just a couple main points on how or what people should be searching for. Yeah, yeah, so the, the tool is not uh, all knowing. Um, we're not using machine learning to natural language processing to really dive down to the root of what you're trying to search. At the end of the day, you should be putting in um, the main search term or the main term for that particular product. So if you're looking to sell a vitamin C serum, you should not be putting, you know, vitamin, organic vitamin C serum with X, Y, Z ingredients. It's so long tail and it will only bring up a subset of the vitamin C serum market. And in reality, in order to sell at a decent volume, you need to be uh, ranking and competing against the other vitamin C serums because that's where the searches are, that's where the clicks are, that's where the sales are. So when you're running searches, you know, let's say you're looking to sell a water bottle. You need to be searching water bottle or you know insulated water bottle. These things that are highly relevant, high volume search terms versus you know blue 13 ounce water bottle with a carabiner or something like that. Like when people get into the specifics, what we see happen a lot is people will just run multiple searches or 10 searches for a particular product because they're looking to get that five star or four stars. They want that validation from us that this is a good product idea so that they can get into it. And at the end of the day, you just have to be looking at the, the, the data. And some of the things like why this is so important, if you're doing product sourcing, I mean, you, you have to think about only the Amazon data. So many, you know, we've seen people that are like, hey, you know, I got into routers because more people are using the internet and we know IT. And, but if you look at the Amazon data, it's like, that's it, an insane decision. You would know that you should absolutely not be getting into routers. Um, and so please only look at the Amazon data. Don't look at the Google trends. We'll show you the trends here in this tool. Like, um, yeah, th this is where it's at because looking outside of Amazon, you know, there's so many other factors at play that are influencing those metrics and you want to see what's going on in Amazon so you know what your opportunity is. So takeaway is don't go into routers. Yeah, um, please don't go into routers. <laughs> or fidget spinners. Yeah. Um, all right, let's keep on moving. So, so we're gonna we're gonna go to the Chrome extension now, and just for as as an example to start off, we're starting with grill gloves, just as an example. So, so here's our Chrome extension, by the way. Uh, let's scoot it up real quick so that you can see. Cool. So the first thing, the first thing you'll notice maybe is that uh, there are a couple red, highlighted red um, products. And as indicated here, uh, a red, a red outline kind of denotes an outlier. And so essentially, what what an outlier is is something that has kind of abnormally high sales or reviews, or abnormally low sales or reviews. And so the the intent here is basically if we scoot over here. Um, here, maybe we'll go to, so basically what we're trying to do is show you products that are not representational of the market. So as you can see, let me scoot over really quick. 
Um, so this guy's sales are much higher than the rest of the market. Uh, so basically what we're trying to help sellers identify is, hey, don't take these products into account because they are not representational of the market. So you should not expect to have the same exact results as these guys. In, in, in reality, I mean, you have no idea what is driving the, you know, this one seller sales. So you need to be looking at the market as a whole to understand this is how I, this is what I should be expecting, right? So when I'm looking at how many sales can, this column is monthly sales and we'll, we'll jump into that. But basically when I'm looking at this, how many sales can I make uh, a month? Right. And so some people we see, oh, this guy's selling 580. So I'm going to source the same product as him and I'm going to be able to see the same exact results. And it's just, it's just not realistic. So what you should be doing is looking at the market as a whole to understand, you know, what are the averages? What are the opportunities here? So that you can then uh, have a realistic expectation when you source, this is candy canes. When you source your candy canes at this time, right now, sellers are seeing between 20 sales a month and 150 not 580. You should not expect to sell 580. So that's really, and, and the same is true with high review quantity or really low sales. Basically we want to filter all the market outliers so that we can give you a really accurate representation of a particular market. Absolutely. Cool. So let's go back to the gloves. Awesome. And so if you'll, if you'll notice too, kind of at the very beginning here, uh, the unchecked box kind of denotes that these are not taken into consideration and the data that's shown here in the star rating. Yeah, and so like kind of a little pro tip if you under if you are ever curious why, um, if you just hover over this little box, you can see you know this guy's filtered out because he's a review outlier, not a sales outlier. This guy's filtered out because reviews are an outlier to the market, and this guy because sales are an outlier to the market. And so as you can see, this guy's review quantity is significantly higher than everybody else's. This guy's review quantity is significantly higher than everybody else's. And this guy's sales are significantly lower than pretty much everybody but this one guy. And so we've programmatically filtered him. If there's ever, you know, kind of a pro tip and um, kind of diving into it, but basically if you ever identify that a product is not representational of the market. So this guy is another low sales quantity. You can come in and you can uncheck the box and then you can update the analysis. So we'll go in, we'll rerun all of the stats uh, and then give you our analysis based on um, the new product set. So cool. Awesome. Kind of moving on to, do you want to stop for Q and A a little bit or do you want to? Yeah, just... we need, we need to pull up the chat so that we can see kind of what's going on. Cool. I think your metrics really help for my first launch. Awesome. Thank you. Wadi. Hey man, I want to see market intelligence hacks. I never knew existed. We got you Ryan best. Um, I used up all my free searches. Dude, already. John, <laughs> what's going on? Home extension is amazing. Hey guys. Thanks. But it's 1.30 a.m. in Scotland. I'm really tired. There's a replay. Jarek, go to bed. There's a replay. <laughs> cool. Uh, Q&A, we'll check real quick. My history from one month ago, there were five stars, however, now when I run them. Yeah, so Kelly's asking, hey, a month ago I ran, they were five stars. However, now I'm only getting a two star. Is this dramatic change result from your market intelligence algorithm or is it because new Amazon sellers have jumped in? So one, we've definitely updated our algorithm. I wouldn't expect it. I know for a fact that it would not go from a five star to a two star. So my guess is that sales across the market have changed in a way that we weren't able to predict. Um, or there's new sellers coming in and cannibalizing margin or something. You know, I can't speak to that particular case because we're taking into account dozens and dozens of like metrics to uh, you know impact our star rating. So yeah, what is the typical average review rate? So. Gerald, we'll get into stats later. We'll, we'll talk on that. Is there a way to determine market depth? Um, so Jody, really the, the answer there is you would want to go through maybe the first two pages to understand um, what are the, what's the sales volume across you know, page one, page two, so that you know what, you, as well as looking at some um, maybe fish oil. So let's say you're looking at a fish oil. I would go and look at other search terms, so fish oil, omega-3, and so forth, to try to get a good idea as to um, you know, what is the volume across all these different keywords across uh, page one, page two. So then you have a good idea as to, hey, even if I'm on page two, I'll be selling you know, at this volume. So there's enough, there's enough volume there for me to feel comfortable. Even if I don't hit page one, uh, then I'll be good going on page two. Um, there are a couple people asking about 
um, star ratings and if even something lower than a five star are worth getting into. And Casey definitely touch on this, but personally, um, just kind of looking at the data, star rating is representative of data. And we'll, we're gonna get into this more, um, but just because something is below five star does not necessarily mean that it's not worth getting into. A five star is great, um, but a four star, you kind of have to ask yourself what you want and what you wanna go for. A four star may be a really good option, honestly, to go for, um, but it's, it's taking the numbers and the data and looking into them more. It's not just taking a star rating and just going with it. Yeah, please, all. please don't. We, you know, our whole intention with this tool is to help you make better sourcing decisions. And you will not be making better sourcing decisions if you see a five star from Viral Launch. Boom, you jump into the market, spend ten thousand dollars on your first round of inventory. Please don't do that. That is not what we're asking, um, or that's not what we're intending. Um, so basically, a five star is an indicator. That's a really strong indicator from us that the the metrics, everything that we're looking at, looks solid you still have to go in and make sure that it's a, a good product to source for you. So as an example, um, we so kind of going to our philosophy, we actually think that every product is a good product to sell so long as it makes sense for you and your business, right? And But for you in this particular case, you get a five star and um, you need to look at those metrics and make sure that those metrics still look good for you because some sellers are okay selling 100 units a month and making $5 profit per item. Uh, some sellers are only okay if they're selling 5,000 units a month. Um, so really, you and, and we'll give five stars to each of those levels. Really, it just depends on some other um, market indicators. And so basically, please kind of take, basically the way that we say it is, you know, if you get a one star, probably not a good idea. Um, so usually that's safer to just throw to the wayside and move on. But if you get a three and a half star, four star, five star, especially a five star, then definitely look into it more. And you still have to look at the numbers, make sure those numbers make sense for you and your business. I'd say even another, another good idea for just jumping around product ideas is star ratings can lead to kind of a trail right? And so if you start to get into a category that you're, you're seeing kind of a trend for increasing star ratings, I can give you ideas of, of where else to look. So if you get something that's like a three star, you can ask yourself, okay, what other, what other products in this category maybe would be rated better and start looking kind of just deeper into that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, All right, guys, a million questions. We're going to jump into it. Thanks for the questions. We'll get back to them uh, a little bit later. I actually don't know how to hide it. Cool. All right. We will get into the, I'm going to keep this up. So I don't okay. think they can see this. Cool. All right. Uh, Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to go over some of the metrics. Cam's going to talk about what they mean. I'm going to go in kind of like a pro tip or make sure that you're aware of what's going on there. So we'll just kind of go, we're not going to go through every, every single column, but we'll kind of go through the main ones and what they can do for you. So clicking on, clicking on this first, um, again, some of these metrics you can click into. And so just right here off the bat. So if it's orange or blue, you can click into it. If it's black, you can't. So if you click the number, it takes you straight to the page. Yep, in that a new tab. Is. So, yeah. Oh, I got you. Um, again, their brand shows the brand name, title of the product. So, if you hover over any of these things that are cut off, we'll show you the full length title. So, as you can see, it pops up. Same with category. Yeah, you're good to go. BSR. This is the current BSR. Uh, we're not the biggest fans of BSR. Um, BSR is a big indicator, is only an indicator of past sales. BSR is not an indicator of future sales. So if you have a BSR of one and you're not ranking anywhere, you will most likely, you will not sell, right? But if you are, have a BSR of 100 million, but you just achieve rank somehow, you achieve rank on you know, some main volume search terms, you have good reviews and so forth, then you will start to sell, then your, your BSR will start to improve. So please never, you know, we see this all the time, this is kind of a launch thing, but people come to us and they're looking to improve their BSR. Really what you need to try to improve is your keyword ranking, which improves your sales, and then because your sales have improved, now your BSR will improve. So please never try to improve your BSR, try to improve keyword ranking. You know, people aren't going through uh, best sellers in patio lawn and garden and then scrolling all the way down to 3,000 and saying, 2,935 and saying, this is the grill glove that I want to buy. It doesn't happen. People search grill gloves and then that's how they find your product. So, cool. Little rant. So from, <laughs> from BSR again, Casey talked about the blue thing. You can click into something and see, um, 
see past history. Yeah, so so basically real quick, this is BSR over the last 30 days. This is really easy to visualize. It's called the spark line. You can just easily see uh, you know, what's, what's happened over the last 30 days. If someone ran a promotion, someone ran out of stock or something like that, you can see any like major variances uh, or maybe it's been steady. That's a telling piece of information. But you can plug in and you can see, you can follow along and see on a daily basis. We're tracking BSR history for millions and millions of products. Um, yeah. So monthly revenue, monthly revenue is essentially calculated by um, multiplying monthly sales by the current price point, if that makes sense. Yep. It kind of allows you to see the potential, again, the potential for products that are at the top in this category. Again, keyword ranking and or results. Yeah. Thereof. So a couple of things real quick. James, thanks for the shout out on our numbers. I appreciate it. Jody, 2300 is not very good. So some cool things. Yeah, we'll get into sales. So keep going. <laughs> Um, any pro, any pro tips for monthly revenue for monthly revenue. Now we'll, we'll, we'll get into that when we get mm -hmm. to monthly sales price again, it kind of lets you see the price range of different products. Again, taking into account the outliers that are discredited from the star rating. But again, you can click into this and see the price trend. So yeah. So how has price been trending? You know, it, is this price a new price? So I should be expecting to, uh, yeah. Anyways, if, I'll get into that again, Ty. But anyways, this allows you to see how prices trended. You can scroll through, um, see how everything is going. And as you'll see here, like apart from the outliers, almost all of these products are priced at you know seventeen to fifteen dollars. So this is really this is a cool learning um, point. So basically, you'll see the market outliers twenty five dollars, twenty eight dollars, twenty three dollars. And if you remember, most of these guys are filtered, or these two guys are filtered because of really high uh, review quantity. This guy's filtered out for low sales. And I think we filtered him out for because he had low sales as well. And so if you look at that, the people that are selling that are most representative of what you can expect to sell at are selling at lower price points. So what we would see or a mistake that we would see is people would come in and they'd say, this guy's selling at $25 and he's selling 1600 units a month. I can, I'm going to sell that same exact product and I'm going to be able to uh, see the same kind of results. And it's just not true. We're saying, we're already saying programmatically, this is an outlier. Don't anticipate having the same results as this guy because it's, it's, it's not telling of what you should be expecting. So yeah, really good learning point and kind of just a good uh, example. We, I didn't even intend for that, but just to show you that please don't pay attention to the outliers. They're outliers for a reason. Cool. So next unit margin. Um, maybe some of you are familiar with this, but basically we just took in the rules for, um, you know, how Amazon calculates their FBA fees. So as well as the referral fee. So now, you know, okay, I'm selling this product for 1689 and I am making 1129 out of that. You can click in, you can click into everything. You can see the referral fee. You can see the storage fee order handling. So you can plug in your landed cost. So let's just say you think it's going to cost, uh, you know, $4.50 to get your product into FBA. That means I'm making $6.79 per unit. Um, the cool thing here is that when I plug it in for this one particular ASIN, it is applied to the rest of the market. So the numbers have changed. If I click here, it's $4.50. And that means I don't have to go through each ASIN that I'm you know, considering or whatever that I want to know the, the information for. I can just plug it into one and then it applies it to the rest of the market. Cool. Monthly sales, Cam, I'll, I'll cover this because I'm really yeah, go for it. pretty passionate about monthly sales. So <laughs> again, you can click into it. What is monthly sales? Monthly sales is just saying, you know, it's an estimate again. So we are estimating what sales have looked like over the last 30 days. If you hover over any of these things, there's an explanation. So we'll explain if you ever get confused or ever forget what any of these columns mean. Um, or, or are referring to, uh, kind of a tongue twister, then you can click or you can hover over and it will tell you um, what it's about. So monthly sales, the reason I'm so passionate about this, this is probably, uh, I mean, the, the whole value is in market intelligence, but we, we spent a ton of time on our sales estimation algorithm. And so essentially there's a few ways that we think about this and are doing this different than anybody else in the market. And so Again, because it's orange, you can plug in and you can see how sales have been trending. And the way that we're doing our estimates is, you know, BSR fluctuates hour to hour, day to day, week to week. I mean, look at any of these graphs and you see these fluctuations in BSR. And so what other 
sales estimation tools do is they look at BSR right now. So in this, for this particular product, they're looking at BSR of uh, 2,935 and they are estimating that BSR has been the same over the last 30 days. Um, oh, sorry, Ryan. Um, anyways, you can see over the last 30 days, Sorry, so they're estimating BSR has been the same over the last 30 days. Well, our sales estimation algorithm, because we're tracking BSR and all of the fluctuations day to day, we are estimating sales on a daily basis and then summing that up over the last 30 days, and that's how we get to our sales estimate. So even if someone has run like a large promotion or there's a big fluctuation in sales, we are taking all of those into account. So maybe this guy ran a promotion. You can see there's this big spike where on June 12th, uh, oh, Prime Day. He had a much higher volume of sales and then that's dipped down. Um, so other tools would look at sales right now and they do basically 28 times 30. Whereas we are looking at each day, we're summing that up over the last 30 days. So it's a much more accurate representation of the sales. Some of the things that we do for our sales estimation uh, uh, algorithm or calculation is we're updating our algorithms every night so that we have fresh data so that you have a really good idea so that everything is up to date. So BSR number one in beauty uh, in 2015 is significantly different than BSR number one in beauty right now. Um, and so we want to have as accurate sales estimates as possible. So cool. Yeah. Next up, review quantity. Review quantity. I mean, it's simply review the quantity of reviews. Again, you can qu you can click in to see the trends uh, for that specific product. So over as, time. as you can see, this guy had some reviews removed. So he's at 336 or whatever, had them removed, and now he's back on his way up. So yep, just more information so you can see kind of more in depth review rate. So this is yeah, Cam, go ahead and talk about review no, rate. No, I, I was just question. gonna say the review quantity or the review rate. Um, I was just going to talk about the, the importance of comparing, using review quantity in comparison to monthly sales. Oh, we'll get to that with yeah. sales reviews. Okay. Cool. So review rate is basically review delta. So how many reviews have come in over the last 90 days versus how many sales have occurred over the last 90 days. And so there's a couple of pro tips here. This is more a pro tip for if you are uh, already selling a product. So um, basically, if I'm if I'm this guy getting 0.19% reviews, and I don't know what everybody else is getting, right? Unless I'm going and tracking this. And so, if I'm only getting you know less than half a percent review uh, re reviews per sale, sorry. If I'm only getting 0.19% review rate, then my reviews aren't going up very quickly. And so that could I, that could mean one of two things. One, you know, your review funnel, your email follow-up sequence, your card inserts are not very good and they're not getting people to, to leave reviews. So something has to change. Or it could mean that maybe people just don't leave reviews for this type of product. There's, there's a number of products that people just don't review. Ponytail holders, right? Like you're not gonna say, oh, these are the best ponytail holders ever. Like those types of products, these mundane products that you, you don't really think about that much um, and you're just, expect to work you're not going to leave a review for and so for some markets uh, i think the looking at the review rate of, compared to everybody else can really make a difference in your business because if you're that guy with 0.19 percent review rates and for whatever reason you're like oh yeah reviews are coming in like this is going well um you have no idea that this guy has 1.38 percent review rates uh this guy has 1.2 almost one, 1 1.8, almost one, like you need to step up your game. Or else these guys are going to continue to uh, surpass you and increase the, the difference between your review quantity and everybody else. So this guy, hopefully it's somebody here. Uh, so then they can kind of get their, their, their stuff together so that they can increase the review rate. So probably one of the, a cooler thing to, to check out when using market intelligence. If you're already selling, go look at your review rate compared to everybody else. If it's not, uh, similar or better then you got you got some work to do cool uh average review rating this is pretty simple if you click into it we'll take you to the sorry if you click into it oh, I, have to reload it. Oh, I have to reload the page but anyways if you click into it it'll take you to the review section for the product so you can quickly go scan through the reviews um see what's going on why is this only 4.3 star why is this 4.6 mm -hmm. what are people saying Something something you can use um, average review rating for, or the average yeah the average rating for is to see if a market is um, kind of a, has a high barrier to entry or, or kind of a lower barrier to entry. And asking yourself, okay, if there are a lot of lower average reviews, why 
why are they getting so such low reviews? And you can use that to go kind of look at the different products and see, okay, how can I differentiate myself to, to separate myself from those lower reviewers or how can I improve on something? Yeah, actually, dude, we're already over a half hour. So let's, let's cruise through this. Sorry guys. I appreciate everybody sticking with us net profit. So this is another thing that, uh, you know, is maybe unique to these kinds of sourcing tools. Yeah. Anyways, thanks guys for, for sticking with us. So net profit is basically, we're looking at unit margin again. So this guy, uh, because we said landed cost is $4 and 50 cents, you multiply that times the number of sales that he's had over the last month and he's profited, uh, five, uh, $5,500 basically. Um, so yeah. And again, you go in here, you change that and it changes his net profit. So yeah, some other things that we're doing because we're looking at the trends, because we have enough sales history on particular products, we're able to show you what sales have looked like over the last 12 months. We're also able to show you what their revenue has been over the last 12 months. And so for these products, you know, especially for seasonal items, this is good, but this allows you to kind of go in and see what you can really expect because for a lot of products, there's some kind of seasonality, whether it be office products or products that lend themselves better to teachers that are getting into school or uh, holiday shopping, whatever. Um, there's some kind of seasonality. So it really helps to see what these guys have sold over the last 12 months. And if we have enough data on the market, we're able to actually predict or uh, give you some kind of estimate on what these particular products will see over the next 12 months. So uh, yeah, hopefully some cool information. Same with revenue trying to just give you as much information or insight into the market as possible. So kind of moving on to the idea of customization. So the tool itself actually has a lot of cool features um, that you can use to customize your experience. So for example, you can drag a category across to make something easier. So if you want to see, if you want monthly sales closer to the front, you can do that. Again, just one example, but also in case you can touch on some of these. Yeah. Um, go for we, it. we just have a ton of columns that you can turn on, turn off, you know, if you're an arbitrage seller, we have a particular uh, setup for you. Again, you can customize everything. Every time you run a search, it sticks. You want to see the number of new offers or used offers. Again, these are kind of arbitrage type metrics that you might want to be paying attention to. Uh, if you want to see the images, so you can see this in competitive view. But I turn on images and then I scroll over and here we go. Here's the image set. Um, yeah. And yeah, so here's the image set. You can click in, you can see the products and you can scroll through the products. Uh, you wanna see the ASIN. Um, if you just wanna see the main image, not the image set, you can do that. Uh, yeah, so basically, you know, everybody kinda has, uh, on the team at least, from what I've seen, we all have our own setups because we're all paying attention to different markets. Actually, the one thing that we didn't talk about is pretty important. So let me close that. Uh, sales to review ratio, that was my fault. So sales review ratio is actually something that I pay attention to a ton. So I usually have this uh, much further to the front. Actually, I'm gonna reset this so that we can, uh... cool. Cool, sales review ratio. So sales re review ratio, basically we're looking at uh, the monthly sales um, divided by the review quantity. And so basically, uh, Review quantity is the barrier to entry in a market and monthly sales is the sales potential. And so what we're doing here is showing you, here's what the benefit is, uh, the reward versus the work. So how much work do I have to put in to get this much reward? So as an example, you'd much rather get into a market where you can sell a thousand units and only need a hundred reviews to sell a thousand units, right? That's a 10 X. That's a 10, um, that's a sales review ratio of 10 versus a market where you need a thousand reviews to sell a thousand units. That's a sales to review ratio of one. So basically the higher the sales to review ratio is on average across the market, the better. Uh, if it's one, uh, probably should not be getting into that or maybe looking into a different market. You know, it, basically we, we suggest looking for markets that are around three. Um, if you can find markets where that's five on average or 10, that that's ideal. But, um, yeah, let's keep on going. Cool. So competitive view this is pretty simple. Basically, we're still showing you all the same information. It's just pre set up to show you the image set. Again, you can click in, you can scroll through the image set versus taking your time to click in. Uh, you can read the full product title. And right here, again, you can turn these things on in the other view. It's just pre set up here. I like the standard view to be really thin so I can quickly scroll through and analyze what monthly sales are and really get a good idea pretty quickly. Next is detailed stats. 
Um, we're showing you stats on the top five, top 10, page one listings. We're showing you sales averages. This is not taking into account the market outlier. So we're, again, filtering those out. Then we're showing you the information. Um, so cool stuff here, average review count, average review rating. And you can see kind of how things are trending, uh, what sales possibilities are, how many giveaways do I need daily to rank um, in the top five, in the top um, 10 in page one. Uh, so just some more information, giving you more information to make better decisions. Cool. All right. One question, one question. Yeah. So let's go back to standard view. Um, what would you say, Casey, what would you say are the top, would be the top one to three metrics to pay attention to yeah. and looking for a good product? Good question. So my number one metric that I look at is sales to review ratio, or you can, so either look at that column or you can do the calculation in your head going through, um, monthly sales opportunity. So monthly sales, review quantity, uh, sales to review ratio, those are kind of all in there. And then I want to look at price. Um, so yeah, probably those four, I guess I'd have four to, to four. say. Yeah. Okay. Good answer. Cool. <laughs> oh, actually let's, I want to show you guys an example of, uh, how updating the analysis can have an impact. So, or ways in which you might use it. So, so if I search charcoal teeth whitening, um, you'll see there's a couple of different products. So let's say you're, you're thinking about selling kind of the powdered charcoal, which comes in these kinds of containers, right? Let's say you're thinking about selling those, but you'll see, oh, there's this, there's this paste or there's this toothbrush. What the heck is that doing there? Here's this paste. And so I want to know what the market looks like for specifically this powder. And so what I would do is, let me move all this stuff. So I will run market intelligence here and which it's already run. And let me reset the view. Cool. So I, oh, actually I wanted it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Sorry guys. Let me go set this up real quick. Sorry. So anyways, I want to go through and I want to filter out all of the pace. So let me go through and filter out all the pace right now. It's a two and a half star product. I want to, I want to keep this or take this into account want to get rid of this guy because this is a paste, not a powder. This is a toothbrush. It's already filtered out. Um, this is a paste already filtered. This is a paste. This is a paste. And let's take this guy into account. I think that's all. Cool. So I can update my analysis. So rerun the analysis based on um, the new information and we'll see what kind of rating we get. So awesome. So now I'm getting a four star, which is more representation, more representative of the powder market. And so now I have a good idea. I'm able to filter those guys out already. Um, yeah, some pretty cool stuff. Let's go into market trends. Yeah. Yeah. Which product do you want to do? That uh, let's, let's just start with grill gloves. Okay. We cool. can show it just as an, an example. So, um, again, this is the market trends tab right here. Um, it just has a couple, a couple different overall kind of averaging metrics. So in top sellers, you can look at individual aspects of each one, right? So you go in, you see the individual VSR ranking, but in market trends, it kind of collects the data and puts it on one thing, one graph. Yeah. Uh, so we're getting a question. Where do we get the market trends data from? So we're aggregating top sellers for each particular product. So for this particular product, we're taking the top selling grill gloves. Uh, we're filtering out outliers again, and we're showing you the information based on um, the market. And so again, I don't think that you should ever be looking at a particular ASIN and estimating, um, based on that. So again, looking at this guy selling 5,000 units a month, because I, if I sell that same ASIN, I can sell 5,000 units a month. What you don't understand is like, what's driving those sales. Maybe they're a wizard at driving external traffic, or maybe they have a brand that you don't know about or a small or, or a following that you don't know about. And that's, what's driving the sales. So you should be looking at the market as a whole to give you a really good idea as to what to expect when you enter that market. So, yeah, that's good. Just kind of go into the differences in um, sales trends. We're going to kind of go through a couple different products. Um, yeah. So, well, this one is really fun. I'll sh we'll show you candy. Oh gosh, we'll show you candy canes. <laughs> if I can get rid of this. Yeah. It's in the way. There we go. Cool. So here's candy canes. This one is fun because obviously it's a seasonal product. So you can see, Hey, here's where there's big spikes. And when are those spikes like October, November, so, or November, December, sorry. Uh, but so kind of a pro tip here is really getting into making sure you know when 
to have inventory in stock and when to run your promotions. And so the cool thing with buyer launch and seasonality is that I can look, okay, last year, right around November 9th, November 10th, 11th, that's when sales started to increase. So I know I need to have stock well before that. I need to run a promotion, you know, a few days before November 9th, November 10th, you know, maybe on November 5th or so, I'm gonna set up my promotion so that I can get ranking on page one right before that sales wave hits. So as I, I hit page one, I get to ride that wave up versus like trying to paddle from underneath and catch, catch that wave and then ride it. So much easier to get ranking right away, uh, ride that wave right before um, things take off. So the cool thing here again, is you can see, okay, here's when sales start, here's to what degree they increase, and here's how long that increase lasts. So uh, even into January, people are buying candy canes, but you can see right around January 10th, people have no interest in those candy canes. And so they go right back down. So again, and we're showing you, uh, well, we'll get into it later, yeah. but you can also see price trends. How, how's price trending across the market? So you have a really good idea. Hey, everybody's raising their price, you know, at this time of the year. So I'll, I know what to expect when getting into that market. Again, going and looking at sales over the last year, we have good metrics. So this guy sold 13,000 units over the last year. But if you look right now, here, let's look at this guy. So around 4,000 units last year, but he only is only selling 164 right now. This is like really important information because now you know what to expect. Uh, if I'm getting into the candy cane game, it's actually selling uh, somewhat decent uh, amount of volume. Yeah, yeah somewhat decent. Let's go on to the next product, yeah. Or you want to talk about? Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a, a pro tip here. So, um, yeah, you can see price trend over the last 90 days. This is candy canes is not the best market, but you can see um, in some markets. Let's see. I think we have vitamin C serum. Yeah. Another in, really important thing is, hey, I can see. I was thinking about getting into vitamin C serum. Now I come here because I'm not looking in a snapshot. I'm looking at the bigger picture. I can see how that sales have been declining across the market. So why in the world would you want to get into a market where sales are declining, right? Because you have no idea how how low that that floor is. When will sales stop declining? Um, and you don't want to get into a market that was once uh, valuable or interesting and now is no longer. Hang on, real quick, real quick. Yeah. Some people ask, what would you say to people that are asking? Okay, why why does it go all the way back to August 2015? Oh yeah. yeah. In some cases, and go to was some or others are just just go back to like November 2016. What do you, what yeah. you say to that? So it's a couple of things. Like one is just how much data we have. Uh, two, how much data do we have for the entirety of the market? If we only had data for like three products in the market, we're not going to show you market trends because that's just three products. That's not really representational of the market. That's just three products performance. Um, so we're making sure to show you like we're, we're trying to show you a really accurate picture of how things were not just like, Oh, these two products were doing well before. Um, so it comes down to how much data do we have for this market? How new are these products? So if you go look at fidget spinners, we actually, our data only goes back to April because those, there's so many new products entering the market. Um, and so things are continuing uh, to change, basically. They're new products, so they don't have much data. Uh, so yeah, so the pro tip, what is this, vitamin C serum? Okay, cool. Everybody's losing reviews, as you can see. So uh, this is not a good example. Candy canes. What do we have here? Cutting board. cutting board. Cool. So consistent trend. Yeah, this is consistent trend. This looks pretty good. I mean, sales have dipped down a little bit. You can see year over year, 33%. Actually, the graph makes it look not so bad. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, so the cool thing here is, let's say you're looking at selling two products that have similar ROI and you're wondering which product should I get into first, right? So I think that this is kind of an important pro tip um, because you only have so much time and really the currency on Amazon and becoming more so because they're getting more difficult to grab is review quantity, right? So if I'm looking to source product A and product B, but product A is generating reviews at 100 reviews on average per month. That's how quickly uh, sellers are generating reviews. And I look at product B, which is only generating 17 or 20 reviews per month. I would much rather jump into the market that's generating 100 reviews per month, because let's say it takes you six months to source, uh, sell the first product, get into the first product, and then finally get into that second product. Uh, that's 600 reviews more that the average seller in that market has then if you had waited six months in the market that's only generating 20 reviews, it's only 120 reviews that you now have to overcome. So basically looking at the rate of review increase, because 
we see this all the time. Review quantity is so critical to achieving success, right? So we can get, pro we get products ranking page one and everybody else has a thousand reviews and you only have two reviews, right? People don't, review quantity is the really only indicator of popularity for consumers. And so if your product only has two reviews and everybody else has a thousand, your product looks inferior. And so you're not going to get the clicks. You're not going to get the sales or the conversions that a product with a thousand reviews would have. And so we see this as an issue uh, all the time. But so basically you have to get a relative, uh, um, sorry, a relatively competitive review quantity. And so if I have to get 600 more reviews to be relatively competitive, that's going to take so much more work uh, to achieve than if I need 120 more reviews to be relatively competitive. So definitely if you're weighing your options in terms of, uh, you know, what is the ROI on these, or sorry, which product should I get into? And you can only get into one at a time or maybe two at a time. And you're looking at three or four or five, you should definitely be looking at the rate of review increase because you're going to have to overcome whatever that difference is, whatever that Delta is in order to be relevant. And if you know, one market's generating reviews significantly faster, you're going to be so much more behind and it's going to take you that much longer to get ahead. And you're definitely going to wish that you had sourced that product uh, when you were initially looking at the market. So, all right, so we we talked about the sales to review ratio in the top sellers tab. Yeah. Now we talked about the market trends tab. What what would you say is is kind of the most important feature or or metric? What are the most important metrics to take into account here with market trends? Yeah. So rate of review. I mean, this is so the market trends is actually just super important all around because if you have markets like vitamin C serum, I think here, which is just significantly declining, you you don't want to get into that. If you have markets like fidget spinners where you should have seen it like back in February, April, I think is when the price drop really happened. You know, on average they're selling at $20 per unit and it just dropped down to like on average two and a half dollars per unit. And so you can see these trends start to happen and you can make those decisions before, uh, or you can make those decisions because you can see that these, these trends or these things happening ahead of time. So I, looking at price trends, because if you're getting into a market where you think you can sell at $40, but it's trending to you know $15 and you're sourcing it for 10 because you think you can sell it for 40, um, it's not a good idea. Uh, and then same with the review trend. This one, everyone's losing reviews because they're probably doing black ass stuff to get it. Uh, anyways, yeah, so looking at the, Oops, sorry guys, looking at the rate of review increase is again, really important. How are sales year over year? I think this is really important again, because you know if, if they're declining, if they're increasing in the, and by how much. So yeah, good question, but I gotta go with pretty much everything. All of it. Yeah, cool. Next section is actually, let's look at the chat real quick. Look at, the, no. question, look at the questions of the chat. Yeah, yeah. Surfer analogy, cool. <laughs> oh, thanks Kenny for the, the backup. Um, Market, okay, cool. We'll, we'll just keep going and we'll answer questions at the end for people that wanna stick around. Anyways, um, product idea score. So this is kind of our analysis page. This is where we kind of jump into it. So this is where you'll see the review or the star rating. Here's where we're showing kind of estimates from the market as a whole. Again, we're taking the outliers. Uh, we're not taking the outliers into consideration. So the month, possible monthly sales, huge um, range. Um, but again, we wanna give you an accurate range. So maybe some guy here is selling super high volume. Um, we're not going to estimate that you can, this guy's selling 8,000 units. We're not showing, showing you that the possibility is 8,000 units. Um, yeah. Same with reviews needed to sell. Well, again, these are really important things. Uh, sales pattern we're showing you. This doesn't have any cool information, but I'll candy show canes. you candy canes. So we're also, we'll show you, Hey, it's seasonal. Um, and we'll show you all kinds of tips, warnings, and alerts based on market indicators. So this one will tell you, Hey, this one's seasonal. Um, we'll show you, hey, these products are rated low. It looks like a good opportunity to source a quality product and raise the standard across the market. We'll show you, hey, there's popular name brands to compete against. We'll show you all kinds of things. Hey, sales distribution across the market is not good. One to two sellers are taking all the sales. You should not be getting into this market because you don't want to compete against uh, this market where there's one king and everybody else is you know, starving. So, uh, one, one common question, Casey, I think you should answer this. Yeah. Um, people always ask, well, how accurate is the star rating and should I trust it? Yeah. What would you tell people? Yeah. So we kind of answered this, but again, like basically the star rating is just an indicator of should I look into this more or not, right? So like one star, nah, 
it's not worth your time really. But if it's like three to five star, three and a half to five star, definitely worth looking into, especially on the five star rating. I think like 4% of our searches now uh, are showing as five star. So it's like a slim uh, group. And so definitely if you find four, four and a half star, five stars, definitely worth looking into more. Um, yeah. Cool. Solid. Yeah. Other basic things, you know, you can export your data. Oh yeah. One. Oh, so we have two things. One, we haven't announced this yet, but we have an Alexa skill for market intelligence. So you can go download it. Um, if, if you know how to download Alexa skills, actually don't. Um, but <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have a video for you guys soon. But anyways, you can just say market, uh, Alexa launch market intelligence. It'll say astronaut online. It's pretty cool actually. Um, but yeah, you're you know washing your dishes or, you know, making pancakes, whatever, uh, you can just say, Alexa, search, uh, launch market intelligence, but Alexa, you know, search candy canes or whatever idea comes to you and you'll get the star rating, you'll get tips and warnings and alerts. And then you can make a note like, Hey, you know, I should look into those candy canes or whatever, you know, gave you a good star rating. So <laughs> yeah, we do have too much fun. It's true. Damn, thanks. Uh, <laughs> cool. So yeah. Oh yeah. So the, the big announcement, um, is that we get this a lot. We, uh, is market, in, market intelligence only works in the U S but we are hoping by Friday, we'll be able to announce that market intelligence will work in internationally in all major markets, mm -hmm. except, uh, I think Japan, India and China. I think that's all. So yeah, hopefully we're able to hit the deadline. Um, we'll see how it goes, but yeah, uh, hopefully everybody's super stoked. You said Alexa. My She's going nuts over Cool. Awesome. Do yeah. you want to go to Q&A or you want to keep on going? No, nope, let's go to Q&A. Okay. Thanks for sticking with us, guys. Yeah, thanks. This really. is like way longer, half hour longer than I had intended. So, uh, no, if you, Gerald, if you run, uh, re, if you rerun a search on search your history, does it count as another credit? I actually don't know the answer to that. Sorry. Um, if we don't, if we don't get to your question, um, we'll either try to respond by text or maybe we'll make another video just responding to questions, but we'll try to get through, try to see how many we can get through. Matt Thompson. On the Chrome extension, can you edit to make the title bar? It's good info. Thanks for doing this. Thanks guys. Any chance we can get a coupon code? Ah, it's only $20 a month. Sorry, we don't have a coupon code. Question with the product giveaways, what exactly is the purpose these days since reviews are not a factor issue? Hey Robert, great question. Um, I really appreciate this question because a lot of people, actually there's a lot of services that are kind of misleading people. And so again, a lot of people talk about, oh, you gotta improve your, uh, you, can you purchase a lifetime license? So we have a year license, uh, maybe we should launch. No, actually we kind of want a recurring uh, subscription. So Prudence, we do have a one year. Oh yeah, so what's the price? Um, so the monthly fee is $20 a month. Um, and again, that includes unlimited searches, that includes uh, Chrome extension, web app, and um, can market into, anyways, and then we have year subscription, which is $200 for a year of market intelligence. Um, so yeah. Casey, do you wanna to touch, there was a question up above that asked about data, data that goes into the star rating. Data that goes into the star, yeah, yeah. so we don't, we don't give away the algorithm. Uh, completely, but we're looking at market trends. So how are things trending? How's price trending? Uh, we're looking at sales, sales to review ratio. Like I said, that's super uh, big metric that I'm a big fan of. And I, I think that it's showing, we call it the ROI metric. So what is the potential that I can get out of this versus how much time or money or effort am I going to have to spend? But sorry, going back, I think it was Robert that asked, why do people run? Um, I'm getting distracted. ADD is kicking in. But anyways, Ask why people run promotions. And so really at the end of the day, the largest attributor to keyword ranking is sales. And so basically we're driving sales at a discounted rate so that you can increase your keyword ranking. Um, every sale or interaction is a vote of relevance and Amazon cares about how relevant or the algorithm is concerned with relevance. And so, uh, yeah, we're not looking to boost or increase your BSR. Actually, it's not about uh, sales velocity. Sales velocity is not the answer, it's actually sales history. Um, and so basically running promotions allows you to build up a great sales history for your particular product, which increases your keyword ranking so that you can be found more and then you can uh, sell more inventory. 
Okay, and then some people are asking what's the difference between this and Jungle Scout. So I don't want to talk bad about anybody, but again, a uh, couple of things. One, our sales estimation algorithm, we're updating it every night. We are not looking at snapshot BSR. We're actually looking at all the fluctuations in BSR that occur throughout the month and estimating sales based on all those fluctuations. So if you run, uh, if someone is running a uh, lightning deal or a promotion or for whatever reason, they run out of stock for a couple of days, whatever. We're taking all these things into account to give you a more accurate view of how sales are trending. I mean, if you look at some products over the weekend versus during the week on these snapshot analysis, you'll get different sales estimates. Whereas we're taking into account all these fluctuations so that you can have a really good representation of what sales look like. Um, we're also updating our algorithm every night so that it's using fresh data to make, um, better uh, estimates. The other things are product validation. So giving you a star rating, which is giving you confidence or uh, lack of confidence in products, if you should have such. And also just the amount of data, we're showing so much more data than the, than um, anybody else out there, our market trends, letting you, I, I think these kinds of tools or competitor tools help you to focus on ASINs. You should not be focused on ASINs at all. You should be focused on how is the market performing? What's the market average for this? What's the market average for that? Or maybe the top 10 average, because that is the best, uh, that's most representational of what you can expect. So yeah, Barbara, this is bomb. Thank you. Alex, dad. Thank you. Cool. Uh, did you see any good questions? Um, they're all good questions. They're all good questions. Mm -hmm. Just to answer uh, in the Chrome app, if you go, someone asked about, Searching on something like page two, yeah. Which if you if you go into the the launch pad, you can open up more results. But if you go to page two on Amazon and just refresh or start a new search, then it'll give you those metrics as well. Yeah, Ares is asking um, if I mispronounce anybody's name, I apologize. But uh, they found a four to five star. How can they verify this? So actually, apologize to the coaches because we're getting like hundred plus calls a day. But you can hit up our coaches and we will help you ver verify those products for free. So. Uh, you found a four or five star that you're pretty pumped about and you think looks good for you and your business, hit us up, call hit us, us up. send us an email, we'll help you guys out. I got you. Maybe not all of you. Yeah. How often are the numbers updated? Jonathan, like I said, the numbers are updated nightly. Our algorithms are updated nightly. Um, all the other information, again, we're just going and aggregating this stuff uh, on a daily basis. So, yeah. Coaching is free. First time user? No, all for time users. Everybody. Yeah. How do I contact a coach if I have a question? So thanks, Wadi. I appreciate it. Uh, you can go to, yeah, call us. We're getting, we just get so many calls. It's, it's <laughs> insane. Uh, I, don't, I don't have the numbers, but sometimes. Call, call or email launches at viral-launch.com. Yeah. Sorry to the coaches tomorrow. Uh, we got it. Yeah. Do we have both data? Jonathan, shoot us an email on what you're looking at or what you're asking for particularly, and we can give you an answer. Sometimes we help with bulk analysis. Sometimes it doesn't make sense for us. Um, what category to aim for? So Brandon asking what category to aim for. We actually have a new tool coming out, hopefully in the next, I don't know, three weeks that will help you analyze particular categories, dive deep into those categories, show you trends across categories and some other like really, uh, deep information. So, um, yeah, check back in a couple of weeks. Is that a snapshot of a product at that second or it's an average of BSR? Yeah, we already touched on the average, B, it being an average BSR instead of a snapshot BSR. Yeah, when we show when we show just BSR though, that is uh, the most recent BSR that we've looked at. Can you say the email for coaches again? Yeah, so it's either, what do you suggest? Launches? Launches at viral-launch.com. Yeah, L-A-U-N-C-H-E-S at viral-launch.com. Um, I would give you my personal email, but... Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, like I said, we'll be in all marketplaces here, hopefully by the end of the week, if not the next week for sure. Would love to see a picture preview. Yeah, Mike, uh, we said that you can see a picture preview again by going into the columns and turning on the image or the images tab or a column. Sorry. And then in the images tab, like I said, let me show you, let me move this real quick. You can click in and you can sift through the image set so you don't have to click into the listing let's talk about uh confidentiality people are asking about how confidential calls oh, or yeah. emails are okay a couple dang sorry guys i should have shared this at the beginning um we don't sell so um 
I've never sold anything online, which is actually kind of interesting. Never sold anything online, never sold anything on Amazon. Um, so in terms of like how confidential are your searches, you know, we do not sell search data. We're not giving anybody search data. You know, if it would help like if you ever meet up with us and you can kind of see that, you know, we really try to operate with high integrity. Um, and so people all the time, I just had some guy today, this CEO of this company uh, say like, hey, you know, can you just give me like one, one good product idea? And it's like, He's like, uh, he's like, uh, I was like, you know, as a company, you know, we don't give product ideas. He's like, no, personally, like just between you and I, I was like, no, sorry, man. You know, we really try to operate with integrity. And so I'm giving you a suggestion. It's just a suggestion that I've either seen our clients use, uh, in market intelligence or a, uh, suggest or a product that I know one of our clients is using. Like, I don't have my own ideas because I'm inundated with all this, uh, all of these product ideas. So I don't know if it's my own idea. It's probably somebody else's. And so basically we're not sharing any products, um, anything like that. And then how confident, confidential are the calls again, because we're not selling, like we try to operate with super high integrity and we're making sure that we're not sharing it with any of your competitors or anything. We really just try to treat, I mean, at the end of the day, like our focus is on helping people. So for like, we're not the like internet marketer money guys or anything like that. Um, this is our second webinar. Uh, not that webinars are bad or anything, but anyways, uh, garlic presses. Yeah. So prudence is telling you all the products you should, uh, not sell. Um, prudence, sorry. Didn't really garlic work. press, lemon squeezer, uh, serum. fidget spinner, fidget, add spinner. fidget spinner in there. Yeah, yeah. But really if you call into a coach, all you gotta do is talk to a coach and you can see that a coach oh, honestly yeah. genuinely wants to help you. Rob green. Dang. Uh, so this is really important. So, uh, monthly sales is not the number of units. It is the number of orders. So BSR only pays attention to number of orders, not number of units. So, uh, you know, there's a guy that I know that has a super high average, uh, units per order. And so he's like, dude, your algorithm is like way off. And I told him, you know, or I mentioned this briefly in passing or something. And then he's like, Oh wow, that makes sense. So yeah, uh, this is number of orders, not number of units. Yes. The webinar will be available later. Rob, thanks for that. That was actually important. You can add products. Can you add the product weight to the info screen? Gerald, that is a tab or a column that you can turn on and you can see the weight, you can see the dimensions. Review quantity question. If it is a multiple variation listing, does the review quantity sort out? So some people, some people are asking how you can pull data from page two and compare it to page one. Honestly, for the Chrome extension, an easy way to do that would, would be to export the data from page one. If you want to compute, compare it just on the same screen, either to open up two tabs and just compare them to open up page one and open up page two on the other tab and to, to launch market intelligence for both or to export the data from both pages just so you can have it on one. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Roddy. Great to know all that Vire Launch does. Thanks, man. Um, does it do keyword research for you? No, it doesn't do <laughs> keyword research for you. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. We, so we don't actually believe in like suggesting product ideas. Uh, the reason being is basically if we're programmatically suggesting product ideas, you have no idea how many other people saw those same ideas. And so what we've seen happen is that, you know, in this is last year, uh, but basically for the first time someone came to us with a cutting board. Right. And I was like, Oh, the first time I've seen someone private label cutting board. Well, later that day we saw like four people come to us with a cutting board that week. We probably saw, you know, 20 people or whatever come to us with that cutting board. Now everybody's fighting for the, you know, the same sales and it really helps to cannibalize the market. So we are helping, we're trying to help people. And so if we're suggesting any idea, then it instantly becomes a bad idea. So that's why we're not doing that. This is a good question. I'm going to candy canes. That is a good question. Um, so, uh, there, there's a question. Could this help me figure out how many candy canes to buy for my inventory based on that graph? No, it will not help you. Uh, basically it will show you the products that are performing best. And then you can go through and say like, well, it looks like customers are looking for this. I'd also suggest reading reviews. You can see, wow, people are saying, Oh, there's not enough candy canes or whatever. I don't know. Um, and then you can make a decision as to how many candy canes. Yeah. It generally will help you prepare for, um, incoming traffic though, right? Just like we pointed out in a seasonal product. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what he's asking us, would your coaches say no, if it is a high barrier to entry? No. So we won't say no, but we'll let you know that it's a high barrier to entry. So if you, you know, sometimes we have clients that are spending, they're going negative hundred, 150 K per product. 
just because it's such high volume. They're selling 30,000 units a month organically once they're up there, but they have the money to do it. So it makes sense for them. That's a good product, but for the average private label seller, probably not a good product. So, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll just make you aware of that as a coach, as a coach, we will help give you the information that you need to kind of make the decision for yourself. And we'll give recommendations along the way, but ultimately it's up to you. And we just kind of, we give the tools to you to make yeah. that decision. Gerald is asking us to be treat verified and unverified reviews the same. Yes. And the reason being is because people aren't filtering, like Amazon isn't filtering out verified versus unverified when you're scrolling through the results, um, the search results. And so if I see one product that has 500 reviews, even if 99% of those were unverified, it still looks like 500 reviews. And you know, the next product has 10 reviews. Well, it looks, or let's say that next product has a hundred reviews. Um, well, you have more verified reviews at 100, but from an outsider's perspective, you the guy with 500 looks to be a more popular product, so that's probably gonna get more clicks, that's gonna get more uh, interest. Do we have an app? Oh, wow, so another tip that we didn't talk about. Wow, good questions, guys. So the, the um, web app does work on your mobile, it's mobile friendly, you can pin it to your home screen. Maybe we should've walked people through this, but. Sorry guys, but basically you can pin it to your home screen on your phone. So you're in Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. You can just uh, open up, you can tap the pinned um, if page. You, if, you Google, if, you, if you Google how to pin a website to like iPhone homepage, then you'll find tutorials on, on yeah. how to pin a website. But basically if you just go to the market intelligence like you normally would, you can add it to your homepage and that's the web app. Yeah, yeah, and then you can run the searches. You can see all the information there right on your phone. We are also in the process of kind of creating some videos for yeah. um, personalization on how to create a launch. You will see Cam there. Got you. Would you launch Japan in the near future? Yes, we are actually, yeah, we're, we're working on Japan. Can we filter to show only five-star products? No, uh, Vitaly, we are not trying to suggest product ideas, so. I cannot resize the window. This, yeah, you can resize the window. So you can, it's adjustable. You can make it wider, bigger. Why does the monthly review rate is a negative percentage? Monthly review rate is a negative percentage because people were having their reviews removed. Any reason why my column drop down isn't working? Shoot us an email, we'll help you out. Uh, this guy, so again, um, this guy's asking, what's the name of our web app on the App Store? We're not on the App Store. Just go to the website on your mobile device yeah. and then pin it to your home screen. Yeah, viral-launch.com, viral sign in, uh, and then go to the market intelligence tab and then you can pin that to your home screen. Sales to reviews metric, and what is a good one? Sebastian is asking, what is a good sales to review ratio? So uh, good sales to review ratio is between, at minimum, two to three, probably three as a minimum, but then I, if you can find one that's five on average, right? Don't just look for that one ASIN that has a five. Look, is the average across the market five or you know eight, 10, anything above five really, especially above 10 is going to be really great. And so the significance again is, just an easy illustration is, you would much rather get into a market where you're, where page one, let's just say everyone on page one is the same. Page one is selling a thousand units a month and they only have 100 reviews on average. That means you need to get 100 reviews in order to sell 1,000 units. Versus, so that's a sales to review ratio of 10, all right? So that's awesome. Versus a market where everyone on page one has 1,000 reviews and they're selling 1,000 units. That's a sales to review ratio of one. So basically, in any market, you need to get up to the average review rating to sell at market potential or maximum sales potential. And so, uh, the number of reviews is how much work do I have to spend to get there? How much time is it going to take? How much uh, you know effort is it going to take to get there versus what is my potential reward? So if everybody had 5,000 reviews and is selling 500 units a month, that's a terrible sales to review ratio. That's point one. Uh, you would much rather get into a 10x. So a lot of reward, low amount of work. All right. This guy's a good question. He's asking any thoughts on predicting future trends? Yeah, Neil, so we tried to do this a little bit on the market trends tab and we tried to show kind of extrapolate out over the next year how uh, we think sales will trend based on how they've differentiated uh, a year ago. For a lot of markets, we don't have enough data. Um, you saw we did year over year sales calculation. Um, basically, we, we try to do this kind of on a per product basis. So if you go to the uh, top sellers tab, 
and then standard view and you scroll over, it says next 12 month sales. We're trying to extrapolate out. We're trying to predict future trends. I mean, it's pretty difficult to predict future trends. I mean, these huge, huge companies with, uh, you know, billions of dollars are always trying to predict these kinds of trends. I think it's very difficult. What we could do is we could see trends as they start, are starting to arise. Um, but then if we're alerting people, then we're probably just, uh, then we're probably just using our client data to do so. And we really want to protect our client data and make sure that we aren't sharing anything that we shouldn't be. So, yeah. Someone asks, what, what is the best way to ask a coach for help? So what, what questions should you ask a coach for help for? Basically from a coach's perspective, honestly, market intelligence is there to give you the tools again, to kind of do some research. But if you, if you run products by a coach, uh, we can help validate it for you and we can help if you're looking for advice. So, uh, how many products should I launch? I'm looking to set up a launch for this specific product. What advice would you have on launching for that product? Or what do you think about this metric? Yeah. Or, you know, what do I need to do to sell well? Some, some people just bring us, mm -hmm. hey, I have this product and we'll go through, we'll analyze your market. We'll analyze your product and say, Hey, you know, your, your studio images are great, but you don't have any lifestyle. How can you connect with anybody? Um, you know, you won't be able to connect on an emotional level. You're not showing any context for the product and so forth. Uh, we'll help we'll help you identify those things or we'll look at the keyword research that you've done and say like, Hey, there's, you know, there's no keywords in your title or whatever. We'll, we'll walk you through that. So any questions that you have, let us know. Bob says, can I drop by the office? It's best if you talk to a coach. Um, but yeah, we'll like take you out to lunch or something. People do that all the time. We're downtown Indy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you're ever in the area, hit us up. It did it related to gender sales products or market segments. Uh, Ben, that's a good question. Say the question. Oh yeah. So the, sorry. The question is basically, do we have any demographic information for these particular markets? Uh, the answer is no. And review rate means review rate again is how many reviews versus how many sales have come in. So if over the last 90 days, uh, each month you're getting a hundred reviews or sorry, sorry. If you're getting a hundred sales and you had 10 reviews come in each month, so 300 review or 300 sales. Wow. I'm killing it. 300 sales over <laughs> the last three months and 30 reviews, right? That means that you are, Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry. 300 sales, 30 reviews. That means you have a 10% review rate. So we're just showing you for each, for every hundred sales that you get, how many reviews are you getting? Someone's asking, can I increase the number of units in the middle of a launch? Anonymous. First, yeah, so. first, I would say, um, again, coaches are there to help validate how to best optimize and set up a launch. And so I, I would encourage you to reach out to a coach if you're curious or, or kind of wondering, what should I do to set up for a launch? How many numbers do I need? What, what are the numbers that I need? What do the metrics look like? You can ask for a coach's eye. Yeah. And uh, shoot them an email and they can adjust your launch midway through. Yes. In terms of adjusting numbers, we can do that. Coaching mm -hmm. is free. Cool. Is there going to be a replay? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, people get Keep on going. Great webinar. Thank you. Kevin King, it would be nice to have a advertising cost per unit spot in addition to the land cost we can enter. Oh, nice. Hey, uh, yeah, perfect. Thanks, dude. We will add that. Kevin King. The reason is Amazon computer problems affect data. Uh, don't know how to answer that. Price is 20 per month. Yeah, it's 20. No, no, no. So you can pay $20 a month or you can pay $200 uh, annually. Um, you know, this this guy says my products in final production is now a good time to talk with a coach and create a launch plan. Uh, yeah, Wade, actually now's a great time. Um, we can help you prepare. I mean, uh, again, we're, we're, not, we're not trying to push you to do anything um, or use us in any way. We're, you know, we're not these sales pitch guys, but so let's say you did want to use us for product photography or writing listings or anything like that. Uh, I mean, there's kind of like upfront, time associated with that. So you can hit, especially photography, like we're pretty backed up. I think if you signed up for photography now, you wouldn't get your photos until, uh, almost September. So, uh, demand has been kind of nuts. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, we didn't really talk about the company very much, but anyways, <laughs> so yeah, now would be a good time to talk with us. If you are interested in using our additional services, the coaches can kind of get you in that queue. So then by the time your product, you know, hits us soil or is in FBA, you have everything that you need in order to 
launch and be successful. Estimated sales trends gives you a number. If you hover on the graph, is this an average of number of sellers? Yeah. So Gerald, again, the sales trend is showing you, um, the, uh, sorry. So it's showing you the, the average across the top sellers. And we don't say how many sellers, but, uh, we're filtering outliers and showing you as much historical data as we have for a critical number of those for us. Can you tell us about product photography service you have? Do you guys, wait, where'd that go? Do you guys do white background images and lifestyle? Cool. Great question. Thanks. Um, so basically we do everything from product photography. We have three photographers. We have a, a retoucher as well. Our photo studio is just back there on the other side. It's super messy. Uh, so I don't want to show you, but anyways, we have five people that write listings. And so, yeah, so photography, we're huge on lifestyle. And so we also have a free split testing tool and through that we've been able to identify here's what works here's what doesn't work for photography and lifestyles are absolutely critical so we'll shoot studio shots um and to show detail and we'll shoot lifestyle photos um the pricing includes model models models if need be um uh locations we'll do all of these things for you so dogs whatever so let's say you have a, a pet brush or grooming brush or whatever um we'll go find some dog and we'll go shoot it in a park or whatever, you know, with someone brushing the dog. And, uh, yeah. A lot of people ask for examples of the photography that we do. Honestly, if you go to the website, if you go to viral launch.com, um, you'll be able to see, and you go to the photography section, you'll be able to see some really good examples of what to expect from our photography service. And that's yeah. honest. Our, our team is amazing. They do have some amazing work with both lifestyle and studio photography. So go to the website if you're curious what they look like. Yep. Gives average advertising cost and to sales. Yeah, David, that's a great feature request, and I agree. Um, ninety percent off on launches. Oh, so the reason being, why do we ask for 9% off on launches? So the reason is, I mean, we're running hundreds of, like, I think like 400 launches a day right now. Um, and so we're distributing like tens of thousands of coupons daily. And basically we have a list of over 320,000, I think right now. Um, but those guys only have so much like buying power on a daily basis. And so if you are selling your product for $10, then that's, nine dollars versus a dollar that's nine dollars more or less that that cus that buyer has to go spend on other products so in order to make sure that the demand is there we want to make sure that you're able to uh so in order to make sure that the demand is there we're charging lower prices and i mean really the the amount that you're spending in inventory costs should should be as long as it's set up well um, kind of be nominal in the large scale. Like you have to spend money in order to make money. So a lot of, a lot of people get hung up on the idea of spending or putting a lot of money into inventory. That's just going to go away at a heavily discounted rate. But I, I always tell people to, to kind of zoom out and see everything from the big picture. So if you're giving away a lot of products right now to get to page one for a specific keyword, you're going to be in a position to make many more sales than you would have been had you not been on page one. So you're investing a lot of money in a 90% giveaway, but you're also investing a lot of money to put yourself in front of an entire group of people that you were not in front of before. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Riaz is asking what a giveaway set is. We don't share that because we don't want people to use it as a sourcing tool or anything like that. Yeah. So Gerald is asking if the reviews stick. So the reviews are not verified reviews. Again, I don't really care. At the end of the day, you just need uh, review. Review quantity is really important. Um, and assuming you have a good uh, and TOS friendly, we're huge on being TOS friendly, good TOS friendly uh, review funnel, then you'll be driving organic sales, which then drive organic reviews. So the verified reviews will come. But yeah, the majority uh, yeah, of reviews definitely stick. Buy product. Amazon yeah, Amazon did ban review. Okay, so uh, the question Gabriel. Is yeah, so maybe I've been saying, oh no. Yeah, Gabriel, uh, Amazon did ban free or discounted products in exchange for review. That is not what we're talking about. We've actually never been a review service. Um, so we're not focused on getting reviews. We're just focused on driving sales, 
uh, to increase keyword ranking. Drive sales to increase sales history, which then helps your keyword ranking. Uh, I think what, what, um, what we usually tell people is with a launch to not even expect reviews, right? So we're not, we're not a review service like Casey said, and so you shouldn't necessarily even expect reviews to come. Uh, what you should expect is keyword ranking. That's, that's the main focus of what a launch is for. Um, reviews might come, but again, you shouldn't necessarily expect them to. Yeah. Riaz is asking, what is the accuracy of the tool in terms of sales estimate? If market intelligence gives me 900 a month, um, what is the tolerance? So we've done some studies. We actually wanted to post this. I, I don't remember what it is. The lead developer in charge of the project, he knows, but, um, yeah, maybe, maybe we can post it for everybody, but we're, we're actually like super proud of it. Um, looking at the, the fluctuation 10, sorry, plus or minus 10 units or 10% sales, uh, is like much higher than anything out there. Um, I don't, again, sorry, I don't remember what it is, but I'd like to post it so then everybody can know and see how, uh, as time goes, our algorithms just continue to get more accurate. So. Uh, emails. Um, the so there's there's a question Stacy Harlow asks so once we get to page one with the service how do we maintain that position I think a good uh, a good answer to that is yes doing a launch will will get you to page one if everything else is is well optimized then the chances of you staying there are increased immensely so your photos if your photos are awesome are killer if your listing optimization is off the chain if you have a really good review follow-up service if all of these things are adding up, all the creative aspects. Your price is at the right point. Your price. Right point, yeah. Then all of these things can combine really to increase your chances of maintaining rank by a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Charlie was asking. So great question. Stacy. Charlie's asking with so many people opting out of follow-up emails. I wonder, is the expense even worth it anymore? Again, we're not focused on reviews. We're just focused on keyword ranking. So we'll probably stop answering those questions. <laughs> um, Stacy, Awesome. Anything in the chat? Let's see. Cool. All right, guys. Well, I think things are winding down quite a bit. Oh, that, that's another question that was actually asked today. Cool. Um, All right. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, really appreciate it. Please, if you're at Midwest Ecom, hit us up. We'll be there. If you're at the Vegas event um, for ASM, let us know. We'll be there. And we're always heading to conferences. I really love getting to talk to people. And I mean, we're huge on perspective. Again, we're working with sellers that are doing 100 million a year on Amazon, 40 million, 50 million, uh, and people just getting started. And I think that everybody's perspective is super important. And so, uh, uh, just to reiterate, this video will be available later um, across multiple channels. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for being here. Really, we do this for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it, again, if you guys have any questions, our coaches are free. We like helping people. Um, so yeah, shoot us emails, call us. Uh, they'll, <laughs> they'll love it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Have a great night Thank or you, day, guys. wherever you're at. Appreciate it. Bye. Oh, wait, hang on. Let's go to...